Welcome to episode 8 of the creative process for Danza de las Brujas Fantasmas. This week, we're going to turn this into this. But first, coffee. Love my coffee. This video, much like the last one, has a lot of sections. In this video, I will also be using reamping. I'm not going to completely go over the process. I did that last week, but I am going to cover what we're doing with the reamping in this episode. Cover how we got the tone for the katana. Then we'll cover how we got the tone for the Fender Mustang. This week, we're going to do a dual simultaneous reamp. I will use an image that I drew up to explain that. On top of the reamp signals, we're going to use our two in the box signals. So we're going to cover how we got the tone for the left and the right guitars and why they are different. Then we're going to cover creating the blends of the reamp mics as well as the direct signals that have been processed. After that, we'll go over how we blend the room mics together to get the room mic sound. Then we'll take all of those signals and blend them together to get our one unified electric sound that we're going to use on this recording. Finally, we'll take that unified electric sound and lay it into the mix. Let's get started. So, as you can see, I'm going to get the katana tone. I'm starting out flat like I did last week. First, I'm going to drop that bass way down. I'm trying to make this guitar fill out the high end more so than the mids or the lows. I'm going to throw a pretty significant mid boost on. And an equally significant treble boost. And then I'm going to throw a ton of presence on there so that this really cuts the mix. We're going to use a blues drive on it, a simulated one anyway. That's with the blues drive. Without the blues drive. With the blues drive. We're going to use a tape echo again, but this time it's set to 571 milliseconds, which is one full beat at 105 beats per minute, which is the speed of the song. Hear it? I'm going to use another delay. Here it is without the delay. With the delay. We're going to use a second delay. This one is set to a dotted eighth note. No delay. This is a modulated delay, and there is the delay. You hear him? We're going to throw a spring reverb on that, just to wash the whole thing in some 1960s electronic goodness. buzz from the amp, so I'm turning the noise suppression up a hair. We're not using the EQ this week. See how it's off? We're 
We're not using any modulation or effects. Just the booster, the two delays, and the reverb. We're going to go ahead and write that. These are available to our Patreons. For the second amp, we're using a Fender Mustang. Let's listen to me getting that tone. First, we're going to add some gain. Throw a pretty significant treble boost on it. Equally significant mids. Since this is an 8 inch speaker, we're also going to throw a decent amount of bass on that. We're simulating the Fender 57 Champ, by the way. Touch Wah. I'm not sure what it does, but I like the sound. Maybe I'll look it up and post a link to a video for you. I know it's not the same as an auto wah. Sounds almost like a wah cock to a filter setting. No touch wah? Touch wah. We only have one delay on this amplifier, and it's set to um, a quarter note. With the delay, hear it? It's pretty obvious. No delay. With the delay. And we're going to use a Fender 65 Spring Reverb Simulator, one of the most famous reverbs out there. It's the one used on the dual reverb from the 60s. No reverb. Reverb. This patch will also be available to our Patreons if you have this old amplifier and you want to use this. Here is how the room was set up when I did the reamping. What I did is I reamped both guitars at the same time. And I did that so I could grab each one in a sort of isolated fashion with a closed mic. I used SM57s, my graphic says 58, they were 57s. Which have really excellent rear rejection. So those signals are almost completely isolated on the close mics. And I have the Katana over here and the Fender Mustang over here. This is a 50 watt amp and this is a 20 watt amp. But this amp has an attenuator on it. So I attenuated it down to 25 watts and got the volumes just about matched between the two amps. Because then, on top of recording each amp with its own close microphone, I have the MXL910 sitting over here. I did not measure to either amp. I'm certain it was not equidistant from them, and I did that on purpose because I want that modulation effect. I want that out of phasing effect between the amps on it. And then I have my Zoom R8 over here with its internal mics turned on. If you're not familiar with the R8, it has two inputs on it, but it also has two microphones built into it, which are really crappy microphones. But they work really great in a situation like this, where I actually want the signal to automatically compress. I want it to sound almost like I had an old tape deck 
just sitting on the coffee table recording the playing, you know? Like I went to see somebody live back in the 80s, hit record on my tape player and tossed it on the table and let it record the show is kind of the sound I'm going for here. And it's kind of the sound those internal microphones give me. But anyway, that's my setup. So that's why in a minute when I import these files, we're actually going to have five files that were imported. Keep this in mind. I might put it up on the screen again later, but keep this in mind. That's how the room was set up while I was reamping. Alright, so now I gotta get this ready to accept my new inputs. So the first thing I want to do is I actually want to create three buses underneath the, all three of them under the electric bus. Now, if we look at the routing on those, they automatically route to the electric bus. And if we look at the routing on the electric bus, it goes to the guitar bus. If I go down here, I want to take my two electric signals, my, and I want to redo their routing before I forget. Now we're going to go down here and create five tracks, one for each microphone. that mic sounds like. Here's my raw signal. Here's both of them together. First thing I want to do anytime I'm working with a DI signal is throw an amp sim on it. One of my favorites is this Kuasa amplification light. seconds. They don't feed into each other. With two separate delays, they feed into each other. 
And I want this one to be a dotted eight. If you're not aware, I'm using four four time here. And a quarter note is one quarter of a measure. So four of them makes up a measure. An eighth note is half of a quarter note. And when you dot a note, what you do is you extend its time by one half. So a dotted eighth is three quarters of a quarter note. By doing a quarter note into a dotted eighth, I get this galloping effect. underneath the tally lap 3 amp Pan those left again. Now I'm going to work on the telly right, so I pan those center. Bring this up. That's got a horrible buzz, so the first thing I want to do is take care of that. So I'm going to find a spot where there's nothing playing. There's a nice big one. And I'm going to throw a gate on that to take care of that buzz. All right, buzz is all gone. Much better. Now I want to get this one done. So again, I'm going to use an amp sim. That's always the first thing you do to a DI signal. I think I like that one best. the one I want right there. delay on this too.
I'm gonna throw some modulation on this one. I'm gonna use a chorus, but not the same one I used last week. Let's get our room mix. So this is the MXL. This is the R8 left. This is the R8 right. Sounds like a good mix to me. Let's listen to it on the speakers. All right, let's hear it in the mix.
All right, let's listen to the whole song. I like those echoes. They fill that in nice. Let's hear them here. Oh, beautiful. Oh, yes! Listen to how big that is! Absolutely beautiful. I love it. We have all our tones. Next week, we're going to do the final mix and the master, and this song is done. So, join us then when we finish this song up. Until then, stay happy, stay healthy, God bless, and have a great week.